and gentlemen, this is Trisha with Insectopia here to sketch another video with you. Um, today I was requested weevils from last week, and I have all types of weevils in the collection, but I pulled three out that I think are kind of unique for their own reasons, and I figured I would show them to everybody, and um, we can kind of pick and choose which one we want to do. Yeah, so this one, you're right, is, uh, it's a fairly large, well, it's large, the largest weevil of the three that we're looking at today. It's got these really, really cute tarsal claws here. Um, they're what we consider apparently 444 because it looks like there's four segments, but there's actually a fitten, a thidden, a, a thidden, a hidden fifth segment. Um, and he's got these really cute, I think we would consider them clavate antenna, clubbed. Um, so yeah, that's, um, option number one. He's fairly large. He's a big black weevil. I believe, <clears throat> I believe it's a sisal weevil. Um, I was doing a little bit of identification before the live stream today. Any bit. So this one <coughs> is cool because of um, because of its scales all over its body, or um, they're actually I believe they're hairs in the shape of scales. But all of this white is actually scales that covers its exoskeleton. And let me see, I might even be able to zoom in further, so you can check out that. Um, all those really nifty scales on its body and that's where the that white color comes from so in regions like down here where there's these darker spots it's just where the scales have been wiped off um he's kind of cute i love his patchy colors um he might be there there's a lot of variety in this species so um you don't, you, we wouldn't have to do his, his patches exactly. So that's option number two. And the third option, I believe, is some type of acorn or nut weevil. Because he's got that really, really long, thin snout that I know a lot of people think of when they think of weevils. Um... <clears throat> When they hold their snouts kind of at rest, they tuck them under their body, like under this way. And so when I pin them, I don't pull their snout all the way forward. So we can see here, um, this is, this right here is the snout, and it goes all the way down to right about here. It's impressive. <clears throat> Yeah, it's a little excessive, but, you know, they, uh, it's, uh, amazing. What, is it three times or four times the length of its head? Well, I guess the snout is part of its head. The, uh, mouth parts are attached at the very, very end of the snout. So the snout isn't a, a nose, on, um, the whole snout is not the mouth part. Because regularly, especially on, you, you can see, well, um, a lot of times you can actually see that the antenna looks like it's coming off of the snout. Um, because that snout's actually the whole face. And then they've got these little itty bitty chewing mandibles at the very end of the snout. Um, and the one with the really, really long, um, the long snout would have those little chewing mouth parts at the end to chew into nuts so they can lay eggs or chew out of nuts so that they can get out after they've hatched or after they've emerged. Probably both. All right. Which of the three weevils are, do we want to, do we want to sketch? First one, the second one, or the third one? And it looks like Susan, that's going to be, um, what do you think? Do you like
like this black one. I think he's got the best kind of proportions. I think we've drawn this one before. Um, but I kind of like him because we can see all of the all of the parts really easily. I won't have to kind of flip it in a bunch of directions to see the snout and to see the legs and stuff. Yeah. Let's do this one. Alright. All the guys are off of the styrofoam. That's okay. We can draw it here today. At this point, we've been doing drawing. I've been drawing and live streaming for over a year. Um, I'll, I'll have to see. I, I wonder how many episodes I actually have. Um, I have lost count. Um, but at this point, I think it's okay if we, uh, if we do a double of one. Alright, so this is our cute little weevil friend. Um, so all weevils, we jump in a taxonomy just a little bit before we start our sketch here. Um, all weevils are in the family Curculionidae. Scooch that over for us. Alright, so all weevils are in this family Curculionidae. And Curculionidae is also the largest family of beetles. Which is really cool because beetles are the largest order of insects. So there are, there are just a huge, huge numbers of species of weevils and I love that. Um, there is also kind of another subgroup that they've moved into weevils, the bark beetles. So all bark, be bark beetles are also considered a type of weevil now. They're in the same family. So they're pretty closely related, which is interesting. All right, so that's the family. And we are, go we are looking at the sisal weevil. Let's see, it's spelled like this. Um, I collected this one in, I collected this one in Arizona, um, but I believe I found it on agave. I was kind of picking, yeah, sometimes they're called the agave weevil. I thought so. I think I've called it the agave weevil, um, because that's where I collected it, so you kind of just, like, peel apart the little, the little leaves and you find them. They're really cute. Um, and then the scientific name of this guy, let me grab her his, his Latin really quick. Right here. So this is Siphophorus acupunctatus. And you know what's funny is, I looked up the species, I identified this guy before the live stream, because I thought this might be the one we did, but I didn't look up the, um, the, the meanings for the, uh, for the Latin here, um, and I am kind of curious if acupunctatus has to do with, like, punctations, um, like little dots all over his exoskeleton, so we're gonna have to check that out. Alrighty. So, we can actually use the microscope to measure today. Yay! Oh, man. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure from the front of the head to the back of the abdomen. But I'm not adding the snout in. Do you see where that line goes? So I put right about um, here at the front of the head to the back of the abdomen. And then I'm going to measure the snout separately. So you can add it, but when I'm doing my first drawing, I'm going to be using kind of that space. So let's see. In centimeters? Oh, it's there. I just have to grab it. Grab it, grab it, grab it. There it is. All 
Alright, so it is 1.41 centimeters long, and then its snout is 0.37 centimeters. So in total, if you were going to like lengthen that, um, lengthen that snout out, um, <laughs> um, it would be 1.78 centimeters. All right, let me write those down before I erase them. I think that's what happens regularly is I end up reading them out loud and then erasing them and realizing I haven't, I haven't done that yet. Okay, you can delete the measurements. Alright. Love a good tibial spine. That's true! The, the tibial spines are nice, and the tarsal claws are really good here. Um, well over. Summer of 2022. Oh, man! That's exciting. I have to, I should, I should look into that. So we're drawing the agave weevil. And then our scientific name, Siphophorus. Oops. I wonder if this beginning S-C-Y has something to do with a scythe. S C Y P H O P. So for years when I was going to school at MSU, I worked in the um, museum there. So I worked with the insect specimens and I would write the labels I'd type out all of the family names and the species names, and then I would go through and, like, label unit trays for entire cabinets. Um, but I think that that's what helped me type scientific names. They just come out of my fingers while I'm typing, and it's kind of magic. But when I'm trying to write them, sometimes you watch me erase a couple of letters there. <laughs> Oh, man. All right, so this is our cute little weevil friend here. I am turning my paper sideways because that will give me a little bit of extra space for our friend. Um, if we have 1.4 and 0.37, that is 0.482, three times. About like that. Okay. So, um, when I want to, I want to get kind of an overall sketch of our, of our weevil friend here first, and then we can zoom in and we can check out all of the textures and kind of where the eyes are and those types of things. So, way up here in the front, I like to leave a little bit of space for that, for that snout. I believe it's a rostrum. Give me a minute. I want to make sure I've got the right word. Yes. All right. So for those of you out there, we can continue to say snout, but um, the uh, the true term for a weevil snout is a um, is a rostrum. So I am starting my sketch with kind of this uh, narrow D shape. I'm going to avoid, like, um, drawing that snout just yet. And I just want to kind of get, I want to start with the outline of this head here, really nice and light. And from there, instead of drawing the snout, I'm going to go back and I'm going to draw the body first and then come back to the snout so that I have a little bit more to compare it against. So we mentioned from the front of the head to the back of the abdomen, the specimen is 1.41 centimeters long. Um, I could even give us the measurement. Might as well, right? Let's 
it's 0.5 centimeters. I was hoping that was going to help us a little bit with the ratio, but it doesn't really help too much. Um, here we are. But can we say snoot and boop it? Of course we can boop it snoot. This is also allowed. Alright, so from the back of the head, we're going to go one, two, three, four, Alright, so I'm going to make this just a nice upward arch and then um, come down. But instead of just going straight down, I'm going to bring it in at an angle until about halfway, um, at like the halfway point of the head here. And then I'm going to go straight down and then move forward. This is going to be where your first pair of legs are connected. They connect right around here and they're going to go forward and then down. Um, from the pronotum, which is this part here, we've got the elytra, those wings, the beetle wings. Um, these are really, really hard shells that help protect the membranous flight wings underneath. So let's see. Um, I'm going to start a little bit lower than that this highest point, right? I'm going to come down a little bit and then The elytra are just a little bit longer than the pronotum, so I want to make sure that I give a nice upward arch, and I want to go just a wee bit, just a little bit longer than the pronotum here. And then once you get to right about where you're happy with its length, uh, you can turn it back. And we want this to go back to where this angle ended here. So where our pronotum came back from that angle and then went down, that corner is where our elytra is going to hit. It kind of annotates the top of the beetle versus the lateral or kind of like maybe the bottom. Um, it just helps for those. Alrighty, and for then, we do also want to, for then, um, we do also want to add the abdomen after our elytra here. So, I come down like this. It doesn't make it too much longer, so I do believe that I have successfully fit this weevil onto the paper at the size that I wanted it. <laughs> um, so, here we are with our abdomen. I want it to come down, make it you know, a nice, happy, wide abdomen, maybe even wider. I might go down a little bit further. That's fine. I want to go like this. All right. Um, and then I'm just going to bring it back up, and it's going to connect to the bottom of our pronotum here. I might end up making this elytra a little smaller. Is that what has to happen? So this is a good point for you to kind of get the size of your body and the ratios right while we're sketching because when we zoom in, it's hard to tell um, how big some of these pieces should be in comparison to one another. Alright, that looks about right to me. The second pair of legs looks like it's going to be connected right around here. And then the hind pair of legs is connected pretty far back, looks like, right around here. Um, if I want to get just now an estimate of that, the length of its snoot, um, snoot, if we want to get an estimate of its snoot here, um, it is, a little bit bigger than a quarter of the body, that's a hard measure. I would say if you go to the size of the pronotum and pull that over, that looks about at the right length. So we're going to take from the top of this head and the bottom of this head, and we're going to add this newt that comes out. And it doesn't go all the way to a really, really sharp point at the end. In fact, there is there are mandibles here at the end. There are chewing mouth parts that it can use to chew into the agave plants with. 
All right, but that gives us the really, really light outline of our weevil friend and is a really good starting point. So we're going to zoom in to the head here and check out some of the additional features. I love that you can see, oh, it didn't move. There it goes. I love that you can see the little mandibles on the end of the snoot. So if you look right at the tip, let's see if I can point it out. Right about there, um, there are you can actually see both of the mandibles. So if we look Right about here, this is the right one. It hooks down, you can kind of see it in the light. And then it's got its mandip, it's like the sharp part of its mandibles right here, up in the front. And then this is the far one curling in towards us. So I think that that is pretty nifty on this specimen. Um, it does have what we would call punctations or like it almost looks like somebody put a pin in it over and over and over again. It's got these little holes. Um, it's kind of nifty that as you go down the rostrum, it gets smoother and smoother. So the density of those punctations decreases the longer it goes down the snoot. <laughs> so that's fun. And you can see the compound eyes all right. Let's see. Well, we're going to zoom in to just the eyes and see if we can um, see if we can get them into view. So that's where they are. And they're a little bit tricky. The microscope seems to be a little bit dark on the computer. And I think that is, yeah, it's as bright as it's going to want me want to go. Um, so the compound eyes, whew, you're not going to be able to see them. They are very, very dark. So they're black and the head's black, so it's difficult to see. But there is a textural change. Um, so the compound eye starts here and is all the way up to the base of the snoot and then comes back down here. It's pretty much this entire region of the head is compound eye. <coughs> Alright, so we are going to get into our sketch and we're going to start adding our really dark lines. Um, you can switch over to a pen if you like. One day I will be brave enough to switch over to pen. Um, at the moment, I just do darker pencil lines, and I will go back through sometimes and ink the ones I loved. <clears throat> Alright, so for the top of our head here, I'm okay with it having a nice arch before it goes and turns into the snoot here. And then for the back of the head, instead of having this line come straight down, I notice there is this little curve here in the... Um, right almost behind where the compound eye starts actually so uh from the top of the head we're gonna arch towards the rostrum and then back right at about halfway and then we're gonna finish it kind of like so we have this and it's also gonna be right there on that lateral line we sketched earlier that kind of the middle where this touches to so it all is going to kind of line up at the end. Alright, then we've got the bottom of the head. And this is also, honestly, mostly compound eye. But it's just going to move up to the snoot. I'm going to erase this little line inside because I don't need it anymore. And then we did say that that compound eye is most of the head. Starting at right around here, it comes out. Imagine that there's a line straight down, kind of where that D was, 
um, that's where the, the rostrum starts and the eye goes all the way kind of up to that. And I like to finish the line across to make it look bulbous with the eye. Um, go ahead and cross hatch within so they know that there are lots and lots of individual lenses here. The rest of the head is so dark that it's so hard to see that. Um, but then we also have, um, right around here, this is a wider part of the rostrum. It's also where the antenna come out. So I'm going to erase a little section down here so that my antenna can come out that hole. And what I'm going to do is kind of create this little C-shaped groove, or uh, this little mountain groove here, um, where my antenna is going to come out of. I am going to put my antenna down like the specimen is here, but you could, if you wanted to, put the antenna up. Now you're going to laugh at me, but the far antenna is actually at a better angle than the close antenna, so you might just do this. consider it, I would almost consider it a, a club. I want it to be a, I think this is, I would consider this clavate, even though, um, the thing that would almost stop me from calling it clavate is because normally clubs are more than one segment, so you'll see a three-segmented club in fungus beetles. Um, but this would be almost like a one-segmented club, which I think is funny. I'm going to make it come out at an angle here, and then I'm going to give it kind of this very narrow oval, kind of like that end cap you can see there, 
and then just make it kind of make sure it stays nice and wide I need to make that oval just a little bit bigger sorry guys kind of like that so you've got the nice um, your antenna can bend but it can only bend where the segments um, are divided Alrighty, so now we've got antenna on our cute little weevil friend. Now all we have to do is look at its snout. Um, let's see. And we did talk about this earlier that the uh, punctations are those all those little dots. They are pretty heavy on the head, but then as they go down the length of it, um, they aren't as, uh, it's a little bit more smooth, I guess, is the way to say that. Um, make sure to leave a little bit of room at the end for those mandibles. So I'm pretty happy with the length and width of my rostrum. So I'm just going to darken what I had already kind of estimated. I'm saying that it's very smooth and as long as it stays, yeah, I'm happy with that. All right. And then at the very, very end, way down here, what I'm going to do is, because I want mine to be a completely a lateral view, the, um, the weevil on my microscope has his head turned a little bit, which is why you can see both mandibles. I only want to draw one. So what I'm going to do is give myself a little upward curve here, kind of like I was seeing the side of where the mandible connected, and then I'm going to kind of angle it forward the little mandible teeth, and I'm going to call that good. I could even add the little on top, so you can kind of see both of them a little bit. There. And then my little weevil has little itty bitty cute little chewing mouth parts. Let's draw a pronotum. and then we'll look at the legs. So I wrote thorax because this is the first segment of the thorax that we're looking at. So the thorax is divided into three segments and they have three pairs of legs. So there's one pair of legs on every segment of the thorax. It makes it kind of easy for like muscle connections and stuff to just repeat it three times, I think. Um, the first segment of... Um, well, the first segment of the thorax generally has this pro in the beginning of the name, and we are looking at the pronotum here. Now, if you kind of imagine where that light goes into shade, that's this, that's funny enough, that's this lateral line that you can draw from the, from right here at that point on the eye to right here at the edge. That light is hitting our beetle right here because that's where it kind of turns the corner and everything kind of gets dark after that. Um, so right up here in the front of the pronotum, there is a little bit of a ledge, but I think that mine is the ledge is just a little bit too high. And then afterwards, instead of just coming up into the arch, that does go straight back for just a moment. And this little space here, we're actually going to double this line because it almost looks like there's a small region on the back of the pronotum that the head can kind of tuck back into. So I want to make sure we give it that little bit of a neck space. And then we're going to start the, um, we're going to start the angle from after that. And this is just really nice and smooth. And follow that line we had already kind of estimated. Yeah. All 
Yeah, right. Um, from the back, I don't really want it to be super duper pointed, so make sure you make sure you round that off just a little bit. You can come in to exactly where we had estimated, and then we can change the view a little bit. But I do believe that this is going to go. Oh, it is a little different. You know what? We'll fix it when we get there. That's cool. All right. So we're not going to go down into that region just yet because there's a lot of leg stuff happening right here. And um, to get all that leg stuff, I want to I wanna kind of do the legs first so that we don't have to erase a lot of lines. Alright, so from right around here, we pretty much only have the bottom left to do. You can go in and add those punctuations. I can even zoom in just a little bit and show you the texture on this pronotum where the light is. So you can see um, all the little dots. Let's see if I can get her. For those of you texture buffs out there, this is the texture of our weevil. Most of the exoskeleton. Look at those tibial claws! And the little tarsal feet! And the little tarsal pads! Okay, I love the little hair on the, the golden hair on the tarsal pads, guys. And it's right there at the very tip. We're going to be zooming in there. That's going to be super fun. Alright, so I was just getting us a good view for this front leg here. So we're looking at the pro leg. No, it's not a pro leg. That's funny. Um, we're going to call it the front leg. And it is considered a walking leg. Um, it's not adapted for jumping or swimming or doing anything like that. Um, we can a little bit see a trochanter if we look really, really hard. Um, it's this little bit of a sliver from here to here. You can see there's this little segment. That is what we would consider a trochanter. It's kind of like a knee that insects have between their hip and their femur. <laughs> so it's like an extra joint that helps their femur um, bend at the right angle. Um, so if our femur is coming up maybe forward, like so, the femurs are not super duper long. Um, the top of it has this really pretty nice upward arch. Um, it's going to angle back just a little bit, but then the bottom of these legs are really, really, like, they're muscular looking, they're strong looking, so there's this look deeper curve here on the bottom to make them look kind of tough. Um, so this is going to be our shape for the femur moving forward here, um, and it's going to come back and it's going to be kind of this sh sharp point at the back. Now, the, um... The trochanter, that little sliver of a, of a segment, is going to come from just above that point, and it's going to curl around and over, and it's not going to look like a whole bunch, but that's kind of their little kneecap doodad. That's what we'll call it. Um, we're not going to finish the back of this, um, the back of the pronotum just yet, because we've got this middle leg to contend with could have been a contender. All right, and then the the tibia is going to be coming down. So from here and then probably right around there, we're going to have our tibia coming straight down. And the leg is already positioned all right for the tibia, but I want to see if it can be better. Yes, it can be. Let's do this a little bit more, because then we'll be able to see the tibial spines even better. And that's what we really want. We 
we want to see them how she would be walking forward. So cool. Awesome. So I'm going to fix the lighting a little bit on this specimen so that we can make this happen. things that we can see um, on this microscope image. So up here where the, um, let's see, zoom out one. All right, up there at the top, why won't it go up? There. Up there at the top where the tibia connects to the femur, it almost looks like a ball and socket, which um, is, is kind of fun. Let me go ahead and write these words for you. So we already did trochanter, but then the rest of them are femur, then tibia, then tarsi. So those are the segments on an insect's leg. The femur is this first one here. The tibia is this one. And what's nifty is it has a series of spines. It's not just that one spine on the bottom, but there is also one up here that's going backwards and there is a third smaller one that you can't see too well that comes out right around here and it's going towards us which is why it's a little bit trickier to see on the microscope camera so from here we're gonna take that tibia and we're gonna go pretty much straight down you can see that the that it's parallel to itself or it doesn't get much wider or thinner throughout most of its length. I'm going to make our tibia about, we're going to go, if you imagined your tibia closing, it would be able to touch the trochanter. So like from here to here on its leg as it swings open, that's about how long it should be straight for. And then we get to this, we get to these curves or these spines on the back. So there's this little itty bitty one way up here at the top that's super cute. Let's see. There's this little itty bitty one right here that's super cute. But then we're going to take from the front and we're going to swoop, swoop backwards past that, um, maybe even a little bit further. There we go past that edge, maybe even looks like double. And you're going to make that one backwards facing, one backwards facing, um, facing spine. But I need to make mine a little bit thinner. So I want it to be about that long I was happy with, but it needs to be thinner coming back. Yeah. And then along with this spine here, actually I'm going to be moving this one up a little bit. Let's see, I got this guys. We're going to move this one to here. And then there's going to be a third one that is right kind of like there. A little V. And these are where the tarsal claws are, or the tarsal segments are. Now, um, this is a little bit trickier to describe, so let me see if I do it well. Um, the tarsal segments on this specimen... Yeah, they're backwards. All right, I think this view will help me describe this to you. Maybe. Uh, yeah, right about there. Okay, so we're looking at this front tarsal segment here. 
and on um, Tars front Tarsi right here, and um, on our specimen from this spine, they're kind of hooked backwards like this, and then the tarsal segments are connected between them and move forward. Um, it helps them with kind of grip, and I imagine, because these are an Arizona weevil, that um, holding on to the substrate in the sand is probably important. Um, so these are going backwards, but our tarsal segments are actually going to be coming forwards from way up here. This is where our tarsal segments are going to be coming out because this spine is going backwards. And where this bottom of the spine is, that's where the bottom of our tarsal claws are going to be because they would be lined up. Um, so you could even imagine kind of where you want your weevil walking and um, you can put your tarsal segments right on top of that. And I'm sorry if there was a moment of disconnection. It looked like I disconnected for a second, but I'm back, hopefully. Alrighty. One, two, three, four, five. Look at that. It's trying to cheat. Okay. I'll show you something fun. Oh yeah, I can't zoom in because there's not enough light. Forget these things. Do it manually on the computer. Sometimes it's better this way. Alright, so those are our tarsal segments for the first leg. Um, you might count four tarsal segments over and over and over and over again because um, uh, we are looking at apparently four tarsal segments. That's what we call this. There are actually five. Um, I think there are a handful of you that may have heard this before, but if you look inside of this cup-like segment, right there at the very itty-bitty base, there's a little bit of light growing from back there, and there is an itty-bitty teeny tiny segment right there. So it's actually one, two, three, itty-bitty four, and then five tarsal segments. Whoa! Oh, I bumped it! Sorry guys. Um, but we call it apparently four tarsal segments because so many entomologists was getting it were getting it wrong over and over that we had to just remake the key re, to re, write the keys in a way that um, people would know that there might be an extra tarsal segment kind of hidden in there. It's kind of funny. And I believe all of the legs on a, this weevil is going to have that. Alright, so for our tarsal segments, we have these triangular segments. The first one is... The first two are actually fairly small, and um, I would say almost... I would say sub-equal. Um, the third one, we're going to start like it was going to be a triangle, but then at the end, instead of making that, we're going to loop it backwards... We're going to create this little loopy doodad here, or uh, I guess the letter C. And then we're going to connect, what this is going to be is the fifth segment, because four is kind of tucked in there. We can't really see it in our drawing. But if I draw that fifth segment here at the end, it needs to be bigger. If I draw that um, fifth segment at the end, I can also kind of finish this third segment by darkening around it to make it look like a cup. And then you've got the tarsal claws at the end that come out. Mm. Applause. 
Alrighty, so that is our first leg. There we are. We're going to be moving on. I want to look at this side of this body here and finish that up because I mentioned for a moment that there might be something weird, wacky happening there. And that's because it does not go straight down. The, the hind coxa, coxa gets in the way. So this is going to be the best that I can do from here. So we're looking, I'm just going to go ahead and write, whoops. Um, hey, that was cool. It actually undoed. We're going to do the agave weevil here, so I don't have to just keep changing it. All right, we're going down about halfway from that little lateral line to the bottom, but then once we get there, instead of just going straight down, I want to give it a curve off to the right, because right there, that's where the, um, we've got the, the middle legs kind of coming off at more of an angle here instead of over here like we had thought. So we're going to give it just this little bit of an angle and then we're going to connect this line to the trochanter. There's a, there is a cox in there somewhere and then that looks about good to me. Now you can use this lateral line if you want for shading purposes because if there was coming a light coming up from above, above it would get very, very dark kind of right here underneath. Um, if you wanted to add a little bit of shading there. I'm not going to worry about it right now. Alrighty. So from here, I'm going to erase all these little sketchy lines. Um, from here, we're going to create almost like a raindrop shape segment here. So it's kind of narrow up there at the top, but it gets wider at the base and it's kind of angled backwards a little bit. And this is the part of the body that our middle leg is going to be connected to. So I guess this would be considered the the lateral of the second segment of the thorax. Um, the femur is going to be connected here and it's going to be going um, out in this direction, probably up more like in the angle of our front leg. Let's draw, let's finish the abdomen and then we'll come back to the middle and hind legs. Well, the elytra and the abdomen, let's finish the body. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Alrighty, so from here we are looking at the elytra of our agave weevil. Um, we're starting right around here. This is a downward slope. There is a little bit of an, of a, hmm, let's call it a, a ledge. There's a little bit of a ledge on the edge of the elytra down to the pronotum. So I want to kind of start with a, like a stronger ledge here. And then I'm going to work the shape from that. Um, looks like I'm going to arch up and then I'm going to come down to where um, it's kind of back to where it started. So let's see, I'm going to, oh no, broke the pencil. That's okay, we'll go again. Yeah. And then erase all the little sketch lines around it so you can see where you are. <laughs> oh no. My good eraser seems to have walked off, um, but that's okay. We will, we'll find it before next time. All right, very good. So we've got that nice arch here and then down along the bottom. I do want to make sure that this isn't too sharp here. I'm going to give it a nice 
um, a nice curve here, but then once we get here, instead of just going straight across, notice that there is a little bit of an arch up, and that's right about where the hind leg is connected. So if you look at about where we have this little bit of an oval, circular type of doodad for our hind leg, you can go above it, and we want this line to arch up right above that. I want mine to go straight just for a little bit longer before it goes up. Yeah, um, it's going to arch up and then it's going to come back down. And you want to make sure that it still is going to be meeting right there where the angle of the pronotum hits. Because that is where the edge of kind of like the top of the body is. Or it's before it gets, yeah. There's kind of like an edge right here on the beetle. This is the, the closest point to us, and then everything else is kind of curved underneath, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So from here, we've got this abdomen happening. Um, let's see, actually, let's get some, some punctations in. So um, if you look here at the elytra, uh, there are those little dots. Um, and those are not, they're not like straight lines, they're dots that are in rows, funny enough. Um, I like to look at the center one, so the center one, I'm going to make lines just to show you. But the center one is actually comes to a point like this and is really, really narrow. There's like two series of dots that come up, go to a point, and then come back. And then all of the other striations, there appears to be one, two, three more around it, curve kind of around it. The next set does touch, so there's a series of dots that comes like this, and those touch. But then the remaining two kind of go to the end of the elytra. So it has kind of a this type of shape, but in dots rather than lines. All right. Let's zoom into the end of the abdomen, and then we're going to come back. We'll do some abdominal segments, and then we can do legs. Sometimes I look back on the order in which I draw insects, and I think, Huh, that seems kind of random, but in the moment, it feels like the right order to draw it. I don't know if any of you have ever experienced this. One, two, three, four, five. All right, so there are a couple of segments that are still a little bit darker, so I'm going to help us out with that. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take there, this point where we had all of those striations kind of pointing in that one direction. I'm going to take this down. I'm going to start where those points would have been and angle it down. That is going to be kind of like the top of our beetle abdomen. So we've got one arch that comes down to that point, and then the next one comes around. But that is going to kind of help you get the angle of your abdomen and about how long it should be and things. So there we are. We've got that abdomen happening. Now there are five abdominal segments. Whoa. Sorry guys. Okay, so from right around here at the end of the elytra, we're going to be kind of arching out towards the end of the abdomen. But then once it, um, once you've arched back just a little bit, we're actually going to be taking that segment down. All right, and we're going to do that two times. We're going to go one, two. Three. So we've got 
Uh, at least these three abdominal segments at the end. Now you have two kind of wider plates that are happening, but they both end right around here, kind of at an angle before that leg hits. So we're gonna be right around here and right around here for our abdomen. And so this little bit of our weevil is the abdomen. Um, a lot of people think that um, right around here to the end is the abdomen because it looks like that would be like the um, the logical three divisions on an insect on a beetle's body, but this is the end of the thorax. So the thorax is actually the largest part of the beetle. It's also the most important because it has everything to do with movement and muscle systems. So there we are. We've got a beetle abdomen, a beetle butt. And now we get to draw this middle leg and the hind leg, and we'll be done with our weevil today. Yay. Oh. Good observation on the organization of the dots. Thank you. And are there little hairs in the punctations on the elytra? I don't know. Let's go see. No. Some of the punctations appear to have maybe a little bit of dust or debris in them. Um, but there are, there aren't any hairs coming out over the distance. Good question. Sorry if it took me a little longer to see it. Sometimes I get all caught up in the buggy excitement. This is what our middle leg looks like. Come on, come on. There we are. Things are happening. middle leg, honestly it is very, very similar to our front leg, except that our middle leg also has a forward facing spine, which is awesome. So they've got the two that go backwards, they're two that go backwards like this, and they've got one going forward and the tarsal claws going underneath. So much fun happening. All right, so with this, um, with our little segment here. This is where our middle leg is connected. So our femur is going to be going backwards in this direction. The femur on the front, the middle, and the hind legs, all the legs look fairly equal in length. So um, I'm going to take my about my size from my femur on the front leg and I'm going to do the same thing just going in the other direction. So the top has a light arch and the bottom is more strongly arched because our beetle has nice, big, powerful legs. And it seems to be kind of, um, instead of having this point at the end of the femur, it's kind of flat down there. It's narrow for a moment. And then it gets nice and wide. And then we can, if you would like, also draw the trochanter. From this view, you might be able to see a little bit of a sliver that would look, that would be right about here. Um, at the base of the femur, that would be your trochanter. All right, then we've got this really cool tibia looking doodad. And on the left side, we've got this, it's kind of forward facing. <laughs> it's the front of the tibia. Um, it's just the tibia is facing backwards at the moment. Um, spine. Okay, 
kind of like that, maybe. Give me a minute on my spine. Has to come in a little bit. So it goes out, comes in a little bit, and then you get the spine. That's much better. And then um, it starts narrow. You've got this outward arch, and then it comes in, and you've got a double spine. Wait a minute. Yep. This is how it's supposed to be. Two spines. It just looks backwards, but it's okay. And I'm going to draw the second spine right behind it so you can see all three. And then the tarsal segments, I'm going to have them... So they're connecting here, and they can either come out this... They can either come out this way, or they can come out, like, this way. I guess this way makes the most sense. So we'll have them come out forward facing, kind of round around here. And we've got the same, um, the same tarsal segments as our front leg. So apparently four, but actually five, because they're trying to trick you. Alright, so we've got two little triangular segments here. One, two about the same as the front leg. They might have to be a little bit bigger. That's fine. The third segment has that oval at the end of it so that the the fifth segment can come out the middle. And we're going to go five and two tarsal claws. One, two. Alright, so that's our middle leg. I think I'm happy with that. So the connection between the middle leg and the hind leg is um, is fairly flat, so I'm just going to kind of give us a nice flat space right here. Oh. Right here that goes behind that tibia. Now our hind leg. Oh, I forgot to tell you. You can only see the top parts of these abdominal segments. Our hind leg is going to be going right through this. Might as well erase it now. Alright, because um, our femur is connected kind of right here at the end. So if I take this back line here, this would be technically the end of the thorax, and then this is our first segment of the abdomen. Um, I'm going to take this line, and I'm going to arch it this way. Yep. And so you've got a coxa in here. I believe that this little, this little sliver of a pizza sliver right here is going to be your trochanter. And then you've got a femur that comes out from here and goes backwards. spine on the tibia. It's just the two in the back. much. 
I've definitely drawn this weevil probably two or three times now. Um, because I not only draw with you as part of the YouTube live streams, but I draw with students in class. And this is the most chosen weevil. And I've shown off all of my weevils. And this guy is everybody's favorite. And he hasn't lost any parts yet. I'm very, very proud of him. <sighs> I'm saying he, but honestly, I'm not sure about um, if this uh, weevil is male or female. Um, I'm not exactly sure how to tell that on weevils. I would assume it has something to do with the final, with the terminal abdominal segment. He's got little hearts for foot pads. Yes, he does. <gasps> we didn't really even zoom in on that. We're going to go and zoom in on the little toe pads. Because I thought I said I was going to, and then I forgot. Let's see. We need a little more light to look at it in that direction. But I might be able to get it in the other way. Well, this is the segment from the top that has those cute little golden hairs on it. Let's see if I can... That tarsal segment is the one that is heart-shaped, but I wonder if I take the label off and flip it upside down. If we can see it. Right here. Oh, yes. Look, the little, um, the little golden hair pads, they're on all of the segments, not just the third one. Cute! Look at those! Yep, he is confirmed he's a My Little Pony, that's what he is. Susan's decided it on, on live chat. And for those of you who have been hanging out with us, uh, you can always chat with us too. All you have to do is subscribe to the channel and then you can chat with us in the chat too and ask all of the questions because I love all of the buggy questions. Um, is there anywhere else on our Weevil we'd really, really like to look at or do we want to zoom out and check them out in full one more time? Um, let me know if there's a viewpoint you were curious about. Um, and what insect we should draw next week. I don't think I got, I don't think that there were two suggestions last week. Sometimes there are, so let me go look. Last week was 12-7. Oh, somebody requested ants. That's what it was. So I'm going to pick an ant next week for us, um, to draw. Spines on the top, fluff on the bottom. Exactly! <laughs> um, ants next week. That will be lots of fun. I actually, um, I do have a queen ant who has already chewed off her wings, so she has her wing scars. Um, I actually didn't know that she was a queen when I collected her, or I might not have collected her, but... Um, she's really cool because Yui can actually look at where her wings used to be. So that's going to be one option for next week. But I've got a variety of different species of ants. So, um, I'll just kind of bring them all like I did today. And we can talk about ants in the general sense. And then we'll pick one to draw and talk about. Um, that sounds like a plan. And if you know of any insects that you want me to draw, just let me know. And I will put them on the list. That would be fantastic. So, this is around about the time. Well, let's go ahead and zoom out one more time so we can see its whole body with the whole drawing. Ha! <laughs> zoom out. There we are. 
So this is our friend, the Agave Weevil, and this is our drawing here today. I can throw it up at this screen so that you can see it in its entirety. Yeah, there it goes. Well, that's our little friend. Um, I need to click this button. There it is. Yay! Awesome. So, I have had a great time drawing this weevil with you and answering all of your questions, Susan. Um, for those of you who have hung around this whole time and have stayed silent, that's okay. Welcome. I'm happy that you're here. Let me know if you have any additional questions in the future. Um, I do teach on a platform called OutSchool, and um, it's a platform for kids. So I teach 5 to 8, 9 to 12 in high school level classes for entomology and illustration. Um, I also have this YouTube channel. That's your reminder to subscribe. You can't actually click that. You have to actually hit the subscribe button. And then the little bell so that your phone rings when I go live every week. Um, if you want to donate, there is a little QR code there. If the QR code doesn't work, the PayPal um, link in the description box will. Um, this is my email address, Trisha at TheInsectopia.com. That is where you can scan a picture and email me your drawings and I love seeing them and I also love seeing the links from people um, and sometimes I get copies to the blogs that people have written about these about this channel too like the drawings and stuff so it's absolutely something that I love please go out and share your art with the world um, if you want to find me on Facebook or Instagram I am at Insectopia 2015 um, on all other platforms. One day I will claim Insectopia. We have to do that. <laughs> uh, Alright, so Susan says, uh, someone different from the queen. Perfect. I have a two-noted ant that looks, that's kind of wonky. It's got a really thin waist. So we might be able to do that one too. Awesome. I hope that you all have a fabulous rest of your week and stay buggy.